Okay, so today's video is gonna be about this guy. I'm gonna change the oil in it, and that's gonna be the main focus for today, but probably a full servicing, but I don't have filters right now for it. And it has 625 flat on or 652, I can't read it. I don't know. At any rate, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out, go mow. We got a good patch area. We're gonna get the engine oil going good and warm, get all the sludge from the bottom of the pan, all up and moving, get it through the filter. Then we're gonna come back here and change it. So I'll probably see you guys in a few hours. So, catch you then. Okay, so I got done mowing. All the way over there is cut. Now I'm just gonna let it cool down, back it in the shop and we'll get to it. So we're just gonna snag us one of those bolt holder 2000 removers out of there. And we're gonna go ahead and take off this headache rack, AKA the engine shroud. And we're going to remove it and I believe these are probably 11 millimeters. That's 12. They're 13s then. Usually I don't film them trial and error, but you know, why not? Yep, those are 13s. So if you want them off, 13s. And of course, there's two of them on each side. All you got to do is take those out, and you should just be able to lift it up and pull off of one. On it. Okay, so sometimes this genuinely makes you wonder if it's worth taking these shrouds off or not, but... There's two more bolts down there. I'm going to presume those are the exact same size. And, of course, it's in a very bad spot next to the muffler. Yep, they're 13s as well. So you're going to need two 13s instead of just one. Okay, considering the fact that apparently the machine's looking smarter than the man working on it. Uh, correction, you don't take these bolts out all the way. They are still 13s. The tab on that side, tab on this side, and there's two... Bolts down here, each with a lock, uh, lock nut on it. You definitely don't need to take these all off. You just need to loosen every single one of them, and the shroud will come off. I found out the hard way by taking them all out, and I lost a washer. Like I said, apparently the machine's smarter than the man. Oil filter's over there. Dipstick's here. Oil fill is here. And then, of course, um, oil drain is down here. Okay, so that oil drain down there is the infamous 10 millimeter. You can use a ratchet or the regular end. I'm going to use this guy just for ease of convenience. But in theory, once it's loosened, you should just be able to use your fingers and loosen it that way. But I'm going to go get an oil pan. We're going to drop the oil out of this. We're going to see how well this works. You need to get a hose in there, basically. And of course, if you feel like it, go ahead and crack the uh, oil fill cap. Let the uh, transfer case breathe a little bit. Just don't forget it's undone. Of course, while that is draining, we can come over here to the oil filter, which hopefully, ah, uh, yes, is hand tight. You're going to get quite a bit of oil that comes out. That's why they have that little drain nozzle there. For once, they actually were thinking ahead instead of like ahead. And uh, just go ahead and spin that guy off. So part number on this it does not look like there's a part number i am sorry to the people that want a part number but i can't give it to you because apparently john deere doesn't like putting part numbers on their filters um you can however get a napa gold filter like i have or you can go into the john deere dealer and ask for one for a zero turn basically whatever model number you have they'll probably have it in stock Okay, oil filter's off. Let's go ahead and discuss the flavor of oil I'm going to use. I don't at all sponsor these people, and they probably won't ever sponsor me, but uh, this is our preference. We usually like Napa Gold filters uh, because I believe Wix manufactures these, and Wix is a very good filter. That's the part number for this. If it does fit, that's the part number. And then recommended is 5W30, although I probably could guess you could get away with 10W30. Basically, you can use whatever oil is uh, acclimated to your area. So if you're in the north, you're gonna want thinner oil. If you're in the south, you can use a little bit thicker oil. In this case, we're in the central US, maybe a little north, so 5W30 is the choice. Obviously, deer's gonna have their oils. You can use them too if you want, but um, for an oil change, just save yourself the money and go do it yourself. Use, use regular oil. I think I paid 15 bucks for all that. Yeah, I believe so. It's been a few weeks since I bought this. And then this guy, I think, was 5 to $10. So together, you probably got 20 maybe 25 max 
all together. Deer would probably charge you 40 or more for it. It's the same oil. Of course, while I'm thinking about it, now is a good time to go ahead and pop open your filters and just go ahead and make sure everything's all right. Go ahead and pull that out. There's the primary. And I believe this is the secondary. I could have those backwards. I'll put that in the little bitty description box below. Uh, good idea to blow these out every time you mow if you can. If not, every other time. Maybe every oil change. That's not recommended though. Uh, basically, just go through your filters. Make sure they're clean. Basically saying do anything else you need to. So top off coolant. Check the radiator. Um, maybe check your plugs. Do maintenance as it's needed. Hydraulic pump, you could probably look at. We changed that last season, so I know the filter and the pump are good. Fuel filter, I'm sure that needs replaced at some point, but we'll do that another time. Now, apparently, this has a primary and secondary uh, filter, which I did not know that. Good to know. But at any rate, just go ahead and check all your stuff. When you're in here, might as well check it. So the next step in the oil change is you're going to want to take your new oil, smear it on this O-ring right here around the outer edge. I don't like to remove them from the filter because they are pretty firmly pressed in there, but it never hurts to take your thumb and push down on it, make sure it's all nice and seated in there. Put some oil on it, put a nice little film on it, and then when you put it on, I haven't put any um, oil on the O-ring yet, but if you thread it on, you're going to want to make sure it glides on like this really easily basically um, and then go no more than hand tight do not get an oil wrench don't get anything else just go as hand tight as you can and leave it okay so the last and final step is filling up the engine with oil and of course you want to make sure your bottom drain plug is tightened up i have uh, filters on there good A little technique if you can get it on there fast enough, just start pouring sideways. And of course, after pouring it in, you're going to want to take the dipstick out and check it. I will uh, set you guys down. Either that or I'll cut to it and we'll see how much oil's in it. So I have everything sealed back up. I'm going to start it. I put probably two and a half quarts in it, which may have been a little much. But you do have to remember we do have the filter and all the oil galleys in the engine to fill. So go ahead and start it up. Uh, set your tools down in a decent spot. Make sure the parking brake's on because it won't start. Seat safety, seat safety switch on this has been bypassed because it was really getting funky. So that's the only switch that's been bypassed. Let's see if this thing likes to be cold. Yes, it is. That didn't hardly do anything now that I noticed, but oh well. Walk, go ahead and walk around and look for leaks. Looks good to me, so I'll let it run for a few more minutes. Get all that oil circulated, maybe run it half half throttle. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it a little longer. I'll come back to you guys and check it one more time, and uh, we should be good. Last and final time, I've run it. It checks out well. We're gonna go ahead and put the guard back on, and we're gonna go ahead and send it.